Hello there. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. This is the first time I've spoken all morning. Good to know I barely have a voice. It is Monday, October 21st. So it's been just under a week since I have vlogged last and now you can probably figure out why I have been under the weather. The back to school germs finally found me. To avoid illness, expose yourself to germs. <laughs> Although making it until toward the end of October, I feel like it's something worth being proud of. <laughs> Cause that means I've been in school for almost three months at this point. And usually I get sick within the first month. So go me, my immune system apparently has strengthened over the years. But this week I have my first formal observation. So I'm gonna take you behind the scenes as I kind of start to prepare for that. We also have a fundraiser that ends today. I think there's a fire drill. We have an author visit, Trunk or Treat is on Friday all of the things, so it should be for a good time. First, if you are not shopping at Costco for all of your comfy fall attire, you should probably reevaluate your decisions <laughs> because this right here, some of the best $14.99 I have spent in a long time. <laughs> also, shout out to Mandy. She has been a longtime follower of mine. She's so sweet. She sent me a birthday gift that arrived over the weekend. And one of the items she got me is this Java sock, which is meant to go around your drinks in order to insulate them and keep them cool. And it looks like a composition book. How cute is this? She also got me one for at home to hold my Ninja Creamy. Absolutely adorable. And then I also brought this to school. It says for a little inspiration and inside the box are some magnets that say things like in a world where you can be anything, be kind, making a difference. Oh, I'm just throwing them all over my table. Best teacher, making a difference, you can do it and way to go. So these are gonna go up on my little fridge cause we could all use some inspiration. So I mentioned that my first I say first, I only really have one formal observation where I have to like submit a formal lesson plan and do a pre-conference, but that is happening on Friday. So fingers crossed that I can feel better between now and then. But my goal was to have my lesson plan ready to go after this weekend. And obviously with not feeling well, that didn't exactly happen, but it's fine. We're gonna get it done hopefully today, if not tomorrow. My pre-conference is Wednesday, so it's gotta be done by Wednesday. But with me not feeling well, it ended up being a weekend of writing all of the cards. So all of the thank you cards for my students, cause I'm gonna send those home in Tuesday folders. Those were for my birthday last week. And then I also went out and got a card for one of my team teachers who just got a house it says shut the front door. <laughs> and then on the inside it says you bought a house, congrats. So I'm gonna pass that around to my team teachers for everyone to sign. And then I just wanted to show you while I've got it, this is the set of thank you cards that I got on Amazon. So it's by Hadley Designs, yeah, Hadley Designs. But they're so adorable. They have different designs on them. This is just one of them. But love, very teachery, very cute. I'll link them for you. Now, speaking of notes, something else that my school does is we write individual postcards to each student. So the point is to catch them doing something just above and beyond, and we wanna recognize them in that moment by writing a postcard either to that student or to their family, and we do it in that moment. And it's meant to be very thoughtful, not just like a quick, hey, great job. It's meant to like, you pour your heart out. <laughs> in that postcard and you give it to the student and they take it to the front office. The front office celebrates them and they then mail the postcard home. And the goal is to complete a postcard a week, but by the end of the year, you have written a postcard for every student. And I have been slacking on it. I definitely, there have been weeks where I have just not ended up writing a postcard for one reason or another. Oh, these are so cute. Oh. So I'm going to pull out some postcards so that <laughs> I remember to write them this week. Let's make it our goal to do two. We're not gonna be too ambitious, because if I say three, mm, that ain't gonna happen. But I feel like getting two this week, that will be the goal. I'm gonna set them out so that it's visible and I am reminded of it. I also mentioned that we have a fundraiser ending today. So for the past week, 10 days, I think it spanned two weekends. 
we have been doing something called Raise Craze, which is a fundraiser. In the past, and I've done this at prior schools, I think they did Booster Thon where the kids would run laps and Raise Craze is focused around acts of kindness, which is really, really sweet. So basically the students sign up, they send out emails to raise money and they will log acts of kindness. And there have been a bunch of different prizes along the way. It ends today. Now, as of right now, let me double check, but I have been refreshing the leaderboard on my phone multiple times a day for the past week and a half. Yes, we are still currently in third place overall for the school. And we are in first place for our grade level, which means if we can maintain first place, my class will get lunch and like a treat up on the stage in the cafeteria where they eat, which is like a really big deal. But we also met our class goal of 50 acts of kindness. So we are going to have a class PJ day where they can also bring a stuffy, AKA a stuffed animal. That's what my class chose as the reward. So this morning we need to decide on a date. I'm gonna try to convince them to do it Wednesday, like middle of the week, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> and then there also been little incentives for the kids along the way. This I thought was hilarious because I've never seen kids get so excited over a fake rock. So. This is basically like a stress ball, but it's a rock because you rock. <laughs> Wayne Johnson, the rock. So it's just this like stress ball that looks like a rock. And it's, and it, okay, I get it. I get it now. Cause I'm sitting here cracking up. It says you rock on the back. Um, so this was an incentive. They also would get like pens and things like that but it's been very minimal. It's not like a lot of fundraisers where they're encouraged to sell to get all of these prizes. It's more so focused on the acts of kindness. And then because we raised, we hit our class goal in terms of the amount of money raised, we also had a popcorn party last week. We got to choose between popsicles and popcorn. So some members of the PTA came by with a little popcorn cart and they all got to enjoy the popcorn. And as a teacher, I also got a sonic drink on Friday, which was very needed, because that's when the sore throat was at its worst. <laughs> and then, oh, as a teacher, I also get a small percentage of it to put back into my classroom, which is really exciting. I don't know when or how that will take place, but it's something to look forward to. And I've just been promoting it with families through emails. I've been sending little email reminders and I kind of joked with them. I'm like, I promise after this week, I will leave y'all alone. <laughs> but I've been very proud of my class. Every single student registered. So we actually have the top number registered within the school and it's just been like a yeah, because <laughs> I'm you know, slightly competitive if you haven't figured that out yet. And then part of my Friday routine before I leave every Friday, I like to get set up for the science investigation because our weeks almost always kick off with one. So today our science investigation is on conservation of matter. So we have these jars that I have filled with some dirt and essentially they are going to weigh it. They're going to add water that they have also weighed and then they're gonna shake it and they're gonna see that the weight doesn't change just from like you know, shaking it up. So when it the water's first added in and the dirt and water are kind of separate versus once they've shaken it up and it's all together, the weight will be the same. So I have just a little measuring cup for each kid plus the jar. Again, this is a caddy I got from Michael's. It's perfect for holding materials like this because I typically have six groups and then they can just grab and go. And then I only have one digital scale. So they'll have to kind of take turns with weighing that out, but minimal materials, which was really nice. Now. Thankfully, the dirt is in a sealed jar. They will be opening it to add water, but I'm optimistic that we can keep the mess to a minimum. And to go along with that, our science word wall has been expanding. So last week, we added in the section about solutions and our CER was focused on the difference between mixtures and solutions. So I need to go ahead and erase that to kind of reset it for the week. But we talked about, for example, hand sanitizer if it's just plain hand sanitizer, it is a solution, but some of them have like glitter in them. And if you can see the glitter, then it's a mixture, but not a solution. And then I added this up here because some of my students were getting confused. It's kind of that idea of all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. So all solutions are mixtures. For example, lemonade is both a mixture and a solution, but not all mixtures are solutions. So like fruit salad is a mixture, but not a solution. This week we're gonna be filling in conservation of matter. And then with math, 
I've kind of abandoned using anchor chart paper and I've just been writing on the board because it's easier and that is the name of the game lately. So this was a reminder for my students on how to check their answer for division. So I kind of color coded the vocabulary and I used a set of markers that actually were just gifted to me by a student for my birthday. So it's the BIC brand, BIC Intensity. And I will say it's a thinner marker, which I love a nice chunky marker, but <laughs> these do have a really good color. Like the color is super strong. I am team bullet tip when it comes to dry erase markers. And I feel like the bullet tips are really hard to find. A lot of them are chisel tips and I'm just not a fan of the chisel tips. Leave a comment down below. Are you team bullet tip or are you team chisel tip? Very important question. <laughs> so because I actually have planning time today, yay, it's not being dedicated to a meeting or anything. Can you tell I'm excited? My goal today is to get that observation lesson plan completely done. So I'm going to sit this morning. I need to kind of get my slides ready to go for the day. I need to do things like stuffing Tuesday folders because those have to go home tomorrow. But this afternoon, at the end of the day, we're gonna sit down and I'm gonna talk to you all about my observation, my lesson plan, how I'm kind of preparing. I would say I had tips to share, but mm, I don't know. I feel like I always just kind of survive <laughs> observations and they go about as well as they can go. But we'll chat more about that at the end of the day. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I still have a voice. I made it to the end of the day with half of a voice, which is better than no voice, so I will take it. I'm gonna make myself some hot tea because goodness knows I need it, my throat needs it. Since the end of school, I have stuffed Tuesday folders because those go home tomorrow. And it was a little more intensive than normal today because report cards are going home tomorrow. So that means I had to stuff the report cards into the envelope. I also went through and numbered their envelopes, so each of my students has a number according to where they fall alphabetically in the roster. That way, when they return the signed report card envelopes, it makes it easier for me to sort them. I also stamped on the report card envelope where it says, please sign and return, so that families know to sign and return it. I borrowed one of my team teacher's stamps for that, and it reminded me I need to go on to Amazon and order some more custom stamps. You can get them made for like, five to ten dollars each depending on the size and I used to do it for like assignment redos and it's also really helpful for students that have accommodations you can have almost like a checklist made into a custom stamp put it on their paper and then just check off which accommodations were used for that assignment but my brain is already going to new stamps I'm gonna need, so I need a please sign and return stamp. I also will need one to indicate like reteaching on an assignment or that it was completed with support, something along those lines. So I need to put together a list and then go ahead and order those stamps. But in the meantime, I had picked up this bag of dum-dums that were like fall flavors because, I don't know, it just sounded fun. I wasn't sure what I would use them for, but I'm gonna use this as an incentive for my students to return their signed report card envelopes. I know not all students may be able to return it signed the next day, depending on family obligations and all that. So they will get the dum-dum whenever they return the signed report card envelope. So it's not like a, you get it the next day if it's signed or you don't get it at all. They will get it whenever they return that signed envelope. But got those stuffed. I also had to go through and check. I had a student who was out and returned a bunch of work that they had completed, so I got all of that checked. That way that can go home in Tuesday folders. And at this point, I've been after school for like an hour, and that's all that I've gotten done, which doesn't sound like a lot, but considering this was a more intensive stuffing of the Tuesday folders, I guess it makes sense. That being said, I'm gonna brew my tea and then we're gonna sit down and catch up about my observation and preparing for that on Friday. And yes, I have a drawer where not only do I keep my laminator, <laughs> but also I keep tea bags because I've been on this big tea kick lately. The only kind I really like is cinnamon apple spice or I do like like a vanilla chai black tea, but I keep the tea bags in here and then I also have some liquid stevia. This one is cinnamon vanilla. I get it on Amazon. I have little stevia packs and then I have my spoon to stir and then I also have this to be able to, I don't know what that's called, but squeeze the tea bag <laughs> at the end. So you know, all the essentials. 
while my tea steeps, let's go ahead and talk about my observation. So my observation is happening on Friday. I previously mentioned that I had my pre-conference on Wednesday, or at least I think I mentioned that. If not, I'm mentioning it now, but that has changed because I realized earlier that I had a 504 meeting that got rescheduled for Wednesday that conflicts with that. So my pre-conference is now happening tomorrow, <laughs> which it forces me to get everything done and prepared, which is fine. Honestly, I'd probably prefer that. That being said, I do need to look over the expectations for my district and what observations look like. As of right now, my team teacher shared what she used for her observation lesson plan and I just made a copy of it and kind of adapted it. So I'm gonna show you the bare bones of what I have right now. I'm not sharing this template because it's not mine to share, but it at least gives you an idea of how it's structured. I will say this is far less detailed than all of the observation lesson plans I've done in the past. And again, I need to go in and look at the expectations, but not complaining about it because we all know writing these super lengthy lesson plans is not necessary because that's not what we use to actually teach. All that aside, this is just in a Google Doc. You'll notice up at the top, it has your basics, name, grade level subject, unit title, key terms, and then materials and technology. I have hyperlinked any of the digital materials. So for example, the Google Slides slideshow links to the slides that I have prepared for that lesson. What I did is I took just those slides and copied them into a separate slideshow. That way I wasn't attaching the whole unit, which is like 500 something slides. It was just the slides for that lesson. I also attached the student workbook pages, the teacher workbook pages from our curriculum, as well as the place value charts, which I have created. Then I listed out the standards and objectives. And then it's just kind of a flow of my math block. So we start with our spiral review and fluency, which most likely will take about 15 minutes. Application problem, which will take 10 minutes. Concept development, 20 minutes. Problem set with partners, 20 minutes. And then the exit ticket will then flow into flex time. So that'll be the remainder of class time plus our flex. Now, again, I just base this off of what my team teacher did because I'm still learning what is expected when it comes to these. This is, as I said, the bare bones. I'm already thinking about with the concept development and these three problems. I think I, rather than having them do it, you know, at their seats, working with a partner or a table group, I think I want them to kind of do like rotations. So I've got to work that out and I'll add that into the plans once I figure that out tonight. But this was basically me just looking at the curriculum and going, okay, here's how the curriculum has it. Now what I'm gonna do is go in and tweak it to kind of make it fit my teaching style and whatnot. I don't like my observation lessons to be anything super fancy. They should be pretty run of the mill because ultimately I want feedback on what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And if I plan this super elaborate lesson, it's not really gonna help me with my day-to-day -day teaching. And the whole point of an observation is to be able to get feedback and be able to learn and grow from that. So I like to keep the lessons pretty basic, but I am trying a few new things. So you might've noticed in the lesson plan, the Kagan strategy sage and scribe. I've never had formal Kagan training. Some of my coworkers have, and I actually saw my team teacher, like she was using sage and scribe and I was like, oh, let me look into that. So I read up on it and actually had my students try it today. And I felt like it went well. So that's something I wanna try out for the observation to get feedback on it. Also, again, I'm noticing kind of that monotony, especially with word problems, when we're just doing word problem after word problem which is why I mentioned possibly doing some kind of a rotation because I'm trying to be proactive and eliminate or reduce any of those issues that I know may occur. Because <laughs> obviously that's good teaching. You want to try to mitigate as many problems as you can foresee. But that being said, I plan to vlog on that day. So I'll kind of give you my thoughts that morning as well as after the fact so that I can share how it went. And I'll give you some more details on like the actual lesson and what all we are doing then. Now I'm gonna share a glimmer from my day followed by me being vulnerable and explaining a total teacher fail. <laughs> Maybe not total teacher fail, but not my brightest moment. So. In terms of the glimmer, I totally forgot that for the Mondays in October, our PTA is doing pun day, you know, Monday, but with puns. 
And so today it was like red themed. And so they had set up all of these red snacks. There were even red drinks in the fridge. There were pieces of candy, there was fruit, there were little snack mixes. It was so sweet and such a nice surprise. I just happened to pop into the lounge to check my mailbox. I was like, oh yeah, it's pun day. So I ended up grabbing some fruit. I just had some raspberries and strawberries and some grapes. And I also got a, what was it? It was like one of those diet green teas, but like a mixed berry flavor. Chef's kiss, delicious. And my throat was very appreciative. So that was my glimmer of the day. Now on to my moment of failure. I shouldn't say failure, it wasn't failure. It just was not my best moment. During the science investigation, which I kind of showed you this morning, basically we were mixing soil and water and we were weighing it using a scale to check whether the mass changed when we shook it up. And all of a sudden it dawned on me that Oh yeah, I set this up for one class, but I have to teach it twice, which means I have to reset it for my afternoon class. And so not that I went into panic mode, but all of a sudden I was like, ooh, I need to have my students help clean up in between so that it's ready to go for the afternoon. And in that moment, I did not think through my students dumping the soil water into the sink. And I'm sure you can guess where it's going. Yeah, not down the drain. I mean, it tried to go down the drain, wasn't working. So my sink got kind of backed up. I cleaned it up as best as I could. I let the custodian know. I'm hoping that it's an easy fix. I feel so bad. I'm gonna blame it on being sick and my brain just not operating well enough. I just didn't, I didn't think it through. And that goes back to the whole being proactive. I did not think that through all the way, but now I know for next year, soil water doesn't go down the sink. No, no, no. And you need to prep for two classes in advance so you don't have to reset in between. <laughs> but I guess it could always be worse. That being said, I'm gonna head home because I know I need to rest and especially with Friday coming up, I wanna make sure that I am giving my body time to recharge and rejuvenate so that I sound better tomorrow. But shout out to my students, they were very, very sweet today. In fact, I even had a student who handed me this like paper heart that they made and they're like, I hope you feel better. And I said, I hope so too. <laughs> but if you enjoyed the video and you made it through my awful raspy voice, please give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As I mentioned, my next vlog will be on my observation day. So you'll get more details then, stay tuned. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one, hopefully with a voice. <laughs>